Helping bring you this event, Spooniver Animal Clinic, located on North Main Street in Canton. Stereo Village Sound Specialists, located on South 4th Avenue in Canton. AM 1560 WBYS, the voice of Fulton County. By Fulton County Housing Authority, Maple Manor, and Longview High Rises. By the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce, to learn more about becoming a member, call 647-2677. A.C. Wood Creations, located in Canton, Illinois. Napa Automotive Parts of Canton, North 1st Avenue in Canton. By Lands of God Daycare and Preschool, By Wesley United Methodist Church, located at 120 North Avenue A in Canton. By CD Country 107.9, your home in the country. And by M. Bixler Video Productions in Canton, Illinois. Good evening and welcome to the Donaldson Center at Wallace Park in Canton for this Meet the Candidates Forum. I'm Kevin Stevenson, the moderator. As we begin, please stand as you are able, face the U.S. flag, and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. You may be seated. Tonight's event is organized by the Fulton County <clears throat> excuse me, Farm Bureau Legislative Committee and the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee. Funding support and sponsorship is provided by Monocle's Pizza of Canton and American Pest Control of Hannah City. We welcome all of you attending in person to the live listening audience on WBYS AM 1560 and FM 93.7. The audience on Facebook Live, thanks to the Canton High School media team made up of Jacob Butchko, Sarah Carpentier, and Brennan Seward. And also the viewers on the Canton, Cuba, and Lewistown cable TV systems, thanks to the cooperation of M. Bixler Video Productions. We want to stop for just a second. Let's recognize the uh, three young Canton High School students back here doing the K Facebook Live. We've been doing these events for many, stand up, all three of you. We've been doing these events for many years, but uh, we're getting into social media now, and the high school was more than willing to try this with Facebook Live, and uh, Laura Anderson is their advisor. She's in the back, and she's kind of overseeing things, so they also thank Mark Bixler Video Productions for that. So, Laura, nice job getting everybody around. The purpose of this forum is to allow the candidates the opportunity to present information about themselves, their platforms, and their ideas. It is not being conducted in a debate format. Candidates whose names appear on the March 17th primary ballot in Fulton County were sent a letter inviting them to appear. Even though all candidates were invited, we realize some have other commitments that have been made prior to knowing the date and time of our event this evening. Therefore, they're not able to attend. Others have chosen not to participate. The candidates will speak in the order their names appear on the ballot. Each candidate will be introduced by the moderator. All candidates will be given up to five minutes to speak. Serving as the timer is the Farm Bureau's Legislative Committee Chairman, David Tolley. David will inform the speakers when their time is up by the sound of the alarm. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. And David will look forward to uh, 
sounding that throughout the evening. And in fairness to all candidates, the time limits will be officially and carefully monitored and enforced. There will not be a question and answer session as part of the program this evening. However, we do anticipate having a question and answer period for the next Meet the Candidates. That will be on Thursday, October 22nd, just prior to the Tuesday, November 3rd general election. You'll notice there are campaign materials in the back of the room to look at and pick up after the meeting. Refreshments will be served at the conclusion of the event as well. All candidates are also welcome to stay afterwards and talk to the audience one-on-one. -on -one. Let's get underway with the candidate presentations. For a representative in Congress from the 17th Congressional District, there are two Republican candidates running. We'll hear first from Esther Jo King. Come on up, Esther. Thank Welcome. You so mm -hmm. much. Good evening. I need it a little bit better than that. Good evening. Good evening. Congratulations to each and every one of you for being an engaged citizen. To me, it's rooms like this that are going to make our country re like we're going to fix the division. We're going to fix. Uh, some of the angst that's happening in our country when we continue to fill rooms with engaged citizens who want to be educated about the people that they're electing to represent them. So congratulations to everyone listening, to everyone watching, and to everyone here in person. It's my honor to get to be with you. I'd love to take a few minutes to just share about who I am, my background, and then talk about three priorities that I believe uh, we can achieve greater representation for the Illinois 17th Congressional District. So who is Esther Joy King? My parents were Christian missionaries when I was growing up, so I was born and raised in Juarez, Mexico, right on the border between El Paso, Texas and Juarez. After undergrad, I took a position working in Kabul, Afghanistan. I did human rights work in Afghanistan. And as you can imagine, the contrast between a country like Afghanistan and the United States sure makes you grateful for being an American. And I really found a passion for this thing we have in the United States called the rule of law. So I came to Chicago, I went to Northwestern University School of Law, became a lawyer, practiced law, jumped into state government, so I was director of entrepreneurship, innovation, and technology for the state of Illinois. During that time, I focused on ag issues, got to travel the entire state of Illinois, but particularly came to Western Illinois quite a bit, and worked on uh, workforce development in the ag industry. It was my passion project when I worked at the state. After that, I was around business owners, entrepreneurs so much that I became an entrepreneur myself, and I started my own company. Then about two years later, I ended up leaving my company because uh, I'd received a commission in the United States Army. So most recently, I've been a JAG officer, a lawyer in the Army, and I was on active duty and then uh, switched into the Army Reserve to run for office. So I see running for United States representative as the next level of service. Service has been a thread, a theme that my parents uh, taught me early on, and it's, to me, with everything that's happening in our country, I had to ask myself, why am I standing on the sidelines when I'm capable of jumping in and standing up for what I believe in? So the three things that I believe that are lacking right now in current representation that we have uh, with Ms. Bustos, three things we're missing that we can do better. One is voting the values of the district. Uh, we are not being represented for what we believe right now. Second is constituency services. So I get to meet a lot of people, as you can imagine, uh, and hear story after story after story of the lacking service and representation that we have right now. So with my business background, I want to bring like customer-focused, people-centered constituency services to the representation for the Illinois 17th Congressional District. And third, something that I am so excited to work on is problem solving. How many of you believe Washington, D.C. is a little bit dysfunctional right now? 
<laughs> uh, so do I. And I'm young, energetic, working hard, and with my way of seeing the world a little bit different through problem solving, through my business background, I believe I can absolutely tackle problems on the policy side. We have so many policy issues that, we're, that are political ping pongs right now that we can just stop playing political games and start doing things to actually represent each and every one of us. So it is my honor to be with you tonight. Thank you for your time. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions at the end. I'll be here for a while. And we also have a contact sheet uh, at the back that I'd love to stay in contact with each and every one of you. This is just the beginning. It's gonna take a movement to truly make a difference and bring better representation to the Illinois 17th. So thank you, thank you, thank you. As we said, for representative in Congress from the 17th Congressional District, there are two Republican candidates running. The other one is here tonight, too. William W. Faywell. Hi, I'm Bill Faywell. I'm from Glen, Illinois, and I am the old, fat, bald guy with the beard. It's a little bit of a handicap to overcome, but with it comes knowledge and understanding. You know, Congress, going to Congress isn't, uh, it's, it's not an experiment. It's not something you go into uh, to, you know, cold and learn things. You, you have to have a core beliefs and an operation and things that you want to get done or you shouldn't go. Uh, I've been up here before and I've spoken uh, about term limits, uh, the need to, uh, passed the Federal Reserve Transparency Act, which has passed the House three times, and what's called the RAINS Act, to start pulling back the powers of the federal agencies and give them back to Congress because that's their job. That's why nobody doesn't like Congress, because Congress doesn't do its job. It's taken all of its powers and given them all to the federal agencies. You guys have heard of Sam's Club, haven't you? Well, this is Uncle Sam's Club. I speak up? Anybody? You can't hear me? Okay. Do I get to start over? <laughs> there we go. Um, that good? All right. Yeah, I'm Bill Fayol from Galena. Anyway, term limits is very important because what happens is that different people and groups and agencies, and this is how it works, they go out and they find a candidate and they bring him in. and the, they get them elected. It's interesting, the three points that I just shared with you last time around, I called them liberty legislation. Now I call them let the people rule because if they're passed together, this is what they'll do. So this summer I called up Esther King and we got to talking, it was about June 19th. And she asked me, she says, well, are you gonna run? And I said, well, I'm gonna leave that up to you. She said, what do you mean? And I explained to her the importance of these three bills and how they would change America from being ruled by the government to the people ruling the government. And that's the problem with every problem in America. Whether it's health care, whether it's the divide between, the widening divide between Americans, it's turning that around. And it's reestablishing our Constitution and understanding why and how you do that. America is going into the turbulent 20s. You are going to see changes in America that we haven't seen for decades, a century, probably a century. That's how serious it's going to get. And you need to send someone there that understands it and has a tempering and a knowledge of exactly what needs to be done. And that's what I bring to the table. That and a little humor. And uh, that's why I'm here, that's why I'm running. Um, I felt that I had 90,000 people voted for me in the last election, and I felt I owed them something to come out and keep driving that home. I know Esther isn't going to do it. She told me she isn't. Uh, she doesn't support these items. And uh, sorry to hear about that, but that's where we're at. Thank you very much for your time, appreciate it. God bless.
Turning now to state offices, for state senator from the 46th Legislative District, there's one Democrat candidate running, Dave Kaler. Thank you, um, and I want to thank the Farm Bureau and the Canton Chamber of Commerce for uh, having these events. Uh, it's very, very helpful, I think, to the community and certainly to us as candidates to be able to meet people. So. Um, I'm not going to give you a political speech tonight. I've, I've been proud to uh, and privileged to have represented you in the Senate since uh, December of 2006. And I've uh, <clears throat> just about got my voice gone. I've been in Springfield all week, I guess talking too much. Uh, but rather than uh, give you a, a political speech, I want to talk to you about some things that people have asked me. And uh, that's just to give you a rundown of what's happening in Springfield. So first and foremost uh, on many people's minds is what is happening with Route 24. And, uh, I remember when I first started running for this office, I swore that before I died or left office that we'd have four lanes in Fulton County, and we're going to get them. Uh, for, so that for this year, we've got uh, some work on Coppers Creek. There's going to be a bridge replacement, some construction engineering, a utility adjustment, and then an archaeological survey. So that's about $11 million worth of work right there. So that, that'll begin this summer. Uh, then in the years, and they say, 21 through 25, so I hope it's sooner than that. Uh, you've got the uh, banner to Kingston Mines four lane, and we've got, uh, uh, of course, the rest of it up to Peoria County where it uh, meets up with the four lanes there. Uh, that estimate is uh, $62 million, so that's a total of $73,600,000. We passed a capital bill of $45 billion. That's why this is possible, because uh, you, you can't fund roads just on your maintenance uh, budget that you use every year. Uh, we, the last capital bill we did was uh, 2009, uh, and, and we swore at that time, we're not going to wait another 10 years before we do another capital bill, and that's exactly what we did. This time, we've uh, done something, I think, very smart. Uh, instead of uh, using all of our capacity to bond and to uh, create bigger projects, we've said, we're going to do kind of a pay-as-you-go maintenance so that uh, the state can uh, put more money into annual maintenance. Uh, we also have... Uh, uh, an increase in motor fuel tax for all the communities. Uh, any taxing body that uh, has motor fuel tax, you'll th you have already seen about a 70 to 80 percent increase in those funds. That's important because townships, because counties, cities, villages, uh, they all need that money. If you've, uh, and if you've driven any roads in, in uh, central Illinois, you know that there's a lot of potholes to fix. Um, so that's, that's very important work. Uh, the, the capital bill is a bipartisan bill, and it's, it's very important. You know, I, I'm in the majority. I'm, I'm an uh, assistant majority leader in the Senate. We don't need to have Republican votes on anything because we've got super majorities in each house. That would be the dumbest thing we could ever do is go it alone. Uh, we had good support from uh, uh, Senate uh, minor, Minority Leader Bill Brady, from the House Minority Leader Jim Durkin, uh, it came together as, a, as a, a bipartisan bill. That's important because it meant better legislation. Um, I want to talk about a couple other things we're doing. And uh, uh, Patrick O'Brien is here, and I see uh, Stacy and Jennifer. And we've been meeting with the uh, folks in the county about what we're going to do about the coal plant shutdown. Uh, it's very important that we uh, uh, work on a plan that's going to maintain some consistency for, tax, for the taxing bodies. Uh, your school district alone in Canton uh, is gonna, would, would lose a million dollars. Uh, with, that's your largest tax provider. Uh, so we have got a bill, it's, it's uh, my bill, it's a shell bill right now, we're going to amend it to include uh, two things. One is a five-year extension on taxes so that uh, uh, the taxing bodies just don't fall off the cliff because what happens then it will raise your property taxes. So uh, that's the first piece of it. Uh, the second piece is that we want to extend unemployment benefits to the workers that have uh, been displaced by that. Uh, it's very important to take care of those families. A third piece is going to be put into a separate bill. It's uh, Senate Bill 3848. Uh, it talks about the coal to solar project that uh, Vistra Energy wants to do. And the idea there is that we've got 6,600 acres uh, at Duck Creek. Uh, let's use that for a solar uh, production field. Uh, what it does is it, it increases the value, again, of the, of the, of the tax base. It's not going to be the same as what the power plant is. You know, I don't want to fool you on that. But it is going to be something, and that helps to stabilize the... Uh, uh, the tax base for the county. Um, the other bill that's very important that I'm working on is the uh, minimum wage uh, small business rebate. Uh, we had a, a, we passed a minimum wage bill last year. Uh, 
Many of us downstaters went to the governor and said, you know, you've got to recognize the difference between the economies of the suburbs and Chicago and the rest of the state, and he was not interested in it. I did talk to him this uh, past fall, and I said, we have to do something to help small business. So we're going to extend, there's a, there's a rebate that is, is going to be given to uh, small businesses for 25% of that increment that you raise your, your minimum wage. So, I'm sorry, my time is up. Uh, and my voice is just about gone. <clears throat> um, so I, I'm sorry I can't stay afterwards uh, very long, but uh, uh, I certainly appreciate being here. Thank you. For state senator from the 46th legislative district, there's one Republican candidate running, Mary Burris. I'm going to have to get this down to my level. Sorry about that. Um, I stand before you as a candidate for state senate in the 46th district. And as they stated, I am Mary Burris. And currently, I am your Tazewell County Treasurer. I'd like to start out this evening. You can't hear me? OK. I'd like to start out this evening. Uh, I'm on my tippy toes. Um, to tell you just a little bit about myself. I'm originally from the state of Missouri. Um, I am from a family of their seven brothers and sisters. My father was a small business owner. He was a cabinet maker. And my mother was a homemaker. Um, and they, they instilled strong um, family values along with hard work ethics. Um, can you still hear me? Along with um, follow your dreams. So in 1975, I moved up to Illinois following my big city dreams and those big city dreams landed me in Pekin, Illinois of all places. <laughs> So um, with raising a family of my own in Illinois, in 1983, I was looking for work. I was offered a part-time position in Tazewell County Treasurer's Office. The following spring in 84, they called me back for a full-time position. There started my career with the Treasurer's Office working from clerk up to Chief Deputy Treasurer. And then in 2010, I was elected the first Republican treasurer, female treasurer, that Tazewell County has had. Um, it is an honor to be your treasurer the last nine years. It's an honor to be part of the leadership team in Tazewell County. Tazewell County is a very conservative, physically responsible county. And it is an honor, like I said, to be part of that team. Um, other elected positions that I have held, I have been um, GOP chair for two terms, bringing in three new Republican seats under my leadership. I've also been Cincinnati Township trustee. Um, public service uh, organizations that I belong to was um, Salvation Army and Pekin Rotary Club. But I feel that my public service is not over. I want to take my small town, common sense, honest values to Springfield. Springfield needs more honesty and integrity, and we need to put trust back in Springfield in the state of Illinois. Um, my first thing that I want to talk about is corruption. The corruption, the corrupt politicians, have, we have got to stop. Um, they are lining their own pockets while our roads are crumbling, our infrastructure is failing. Which brings me to my first point tonight, and that is, they're calling it the fair tax. I call it um, nothing but an open checkbook for corrupt politicians to raise taxes year after year after year on you and I. Second thing I stand strong for, and that is your Second Amendment. As I stand before you tonight, it is under attack. I want to be that strong voice to go to Springfield to protect your constitutional rights and your Second Amendment. Third thing I want to talk about is community. Community awareness, connection, development. I have done it. I have proven it as your county treasurer through um, my line has been through your local banks. I go to those local banks. I ask for um, them to help me invest the revenue, manage the revenue, your revenue that you put right back into the community, growing and strengthening your own community. Um, you know, we have everything in the 46th district from beautiful farmland, airport, Air National Guard, outstanding universities, to outstanding hospitals. We have got to find a way to bring rule to urban and stop running good families out of the state of Illinois, closing good businesses, closing plants within our own 46th district. We have got to learn to live within our means and stop taxing our way out of debt. Um, you know, my two grown children and my six grandchildren, we all live in the 46th district. So to say that I have a vested interest, I truly do have a vested interest in the 46th district. But not just for me, for you, 
for each and every one of you. I am stepping up to the plate to just do what is right for the citizens in, in the 46th district and in the state of Illinois. And you know, I, I, one thing in closing, I do want you to know we are Illinois not corrupt politicians taxing their way out of debt. So I stand before you once again as a candidate for the 46th District State Senate, asking for your support. I would like to thank each and every one of you who have given me a little of your time tonight in hearing what I have to stand for and a little bit about myself. Thank you very much. For a representative in the Illinois General Assembly from the 91st Legislative District, there's one Democrat running, Josh Grise. Um, I'm going to start off uh, by saying that I was a teacher, and uh, five minutes seems like a long time, but uh, if you ask any of my students, I can fill that up in a hurry. So I'm going to try and keep it less than that. But uh, I want to start by uh, explaining a little bit about my history. I was uh, born and raised here in Pekin, uh, right down the road, and my uh, family was all service oriented. My dad was a teacher. Uh, my mom took in foster children. We had a couple hundred foster children throughout growing up. And what it did for me was it taught me that I wanted to live a life of service. And so um, I started that life of service as a, a high schooler. I volunteered for Special Olympics, which ended up being my first job. I, uh, I worked in summer camps for students with disabilities, and I ended up volunteering at uh, Muscular Dystrophy Camp. And what that taught me was um, to give more to other people than I did myself. And it led me to want to um, become a special education teacher. So that's what I did for eight years uh, right out of college. I taught uh, special ed in the junior high school and high school level. And um, during that eight years, um, I learned a lot about what's going on in the school system and how much we need to fix. I learned a lot about poverty. Uh, I, saw, I worked in some very low income districts and I learned that we need to um, bring economic uh, change to Illinois. Uh, and I, I learned a little bit about uh, the insurance industry, uh, just personal experience. Uh, my family, we went through a bankruptcy due to medical debt uh, because we had our second child of four. Um, and we ended up um, being, learning, trying to navigate the system that just did not work for us. Um, we had good insurance as a teacher and we still went through the pitfalls of, of bankruptcy. So um, when I was going through all that, I, I tried to figure out like, well, what's going on, what's happening. And um, I learned that there was uh, a, a lot of people that were um, trying to control what's happening in, in politics and what's happening um, in, in the industries and how it affects our real lives. And so as I started learning, I started talking to friends and family and learning that many of them were going through similar things um, and, and some going through other obstacles that maybe I didn't go through. And as a person who cares a lot about other people, um, I started thinking about something needs to change. And so I um, started learning more, researching more. And um, what I found was uh, that, that when people talk, it doesn't matter what background you're from, right? When, we, when you're a Republican or a Democrat or whatever, when we talk about it, we start learning about other people. And, and when we come together, we can actually move forward. So that's um, really what my campaign is about, is coming forward and moving forward together. Um, and when we say that, I, I mean a couple of different things. One of the things I mean is, um, as a, as a people, when, when we care about each other, when, when my family cares about your family and your family cares about my family, we're all better off for it. And so when we see our, our neighbors and friends and family struggling, we have to do everything we can to help those people out. And so, um, I believe that you need to be the change that you want to see. And so that's what I'm starting to do now. So I am, uh, I know that uh, Mike Eunice is very well liked. I voted for him, great guy, big shoes to fill. Um, so I know that this is a big task, but uh, I feel like I'm up for it. I, I'm a regular person. I've been through some struggles, uh, but, but we're here still fighting. And I think that we just need to come together to, 
to move forward. So um, that's what I'm here to do. I'm going to try and cut out early. I think I'm doing pretty good here. All right. <laughs> um, I do have a website. If you um, want to help us move forward together, visit us at joshfryl91.com and uh, learn more about us. Thank you so much. For a representative in the Illinois General Assembly from the 93rd Legislative District, there are two Democrats running. One of them is here tonight, Scott Stoll. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you. Can you guys all hear me? I never know here. A little taller than some. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you to everybody who came out tonight and uh, for everybody that had a, had a piece in this. This is uh, a really great turnout. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I am from Rushville, and um, I help run um, our small community family pharmacy, Moreland and Devitt. And we, that's been in our family for 60 years. Um, so I'm, I'm really focused on, you know, trying to help people. Uh, again, it's a servant leadership type of uh, position for me. I've also spent the last three years on city council as a, as a city councilman, um, where I've been able to work on about nine different committees. I chair four of them uh, right now. So I've worked from everything from sewer and water to infrastructure pieces with our roads and sidewalks and lighting and you name it. Uh, I think they even put me on the airport one time, and I'm not sure we still actually have one in Rushville, but um, it's mode, whatever it is. Um, I am uh, I'm the father of uh, three beautiful girls, married um, to a wonderful wife. Um, I'm proudly endorsed here uh, in my campaign in the primary by AFL-CIO, the Illinois Federation of Teachers, um, the um, uh, Brotherhood of uh, Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen, just to name a few. Um, my focuses have always stayed the same throughout this process. Um, as someone who works in healthcare, it's really important to me to see people healthy, um, to have affordable, accessible healthcare. All too often I see in my job people turning away medications that they need to survive or medications that help their child. Um, people on fixed incomes not being able to pay for their medication. Uh, I've also seen it where they won't go to the doctors or physicians because they don't have the copay to pay for it or they don't have the deductible to pay for it. Um, and that just breaks my heart really to see people not having the affordable health care that they, that they uh, could utilize. It's one of those things that as we see it, and I, I worked through some of the legislation just from a pharmacy side, and there are so many corporate uh, insurance companies and drug manufacturers that are setting the tone for our, our for all of our premiums and all of our insurances and that's hiking everything up um, for all of all of you all of us I, I have insurance as well I mean it's you know that's the the key right there is getting them out of the decision making in our state and focusing more on how we can provide good quality health care responsibly I say that because um, there are certainly are things out there that we've all heard now that we may feel like are irresponsible um, but I, I focus on the responsibility part and I think that the main piece of healthcare is getting these folks that are only worried about their bottom dollar out of that system and focus more on what we can do to make it better for the people that are out there that need it as a father, like I said, with three daughters, education is also extremely important to me. Um, this is a double-sided coin for me because I feel like we need to have state dollars uh, going into our public education, to our uh, K through 12 schools and beyond. Um, by doing so, and by budgeting for that appropriately and responsibly, we can lower the tax, the property tax burden that we seem to have. I, I have it as well. I, I choke up every time I see my property tax bill come in the mail as well. Um, so really, it's, it can help us in many different ways by being able to uh, reduce our property tax burden, fund our schools, fund our kids, fund the future, uh, take care of our teachers and the programs that are in there. Um, and lastly, the, uh, as a city councilman, I've focused on community and economic development. That's really been a passion project for me. I, as I drive through all of these towns knocking on doors, we need to keep the lights on on our main streets. We have beautiful towns, and we're all too often seeing the towns or the, the mom and pop shops go away. Um, I'm, I'm one of them, and I've seen all of our, a lot of our friends um, who have had pharmacies close their doors because the state's not supporting them or um, you know, maybe we're not 
educating um, municipalities and different things like that that we can. I've I focused really hard on trying to raise up Rushville, do the things that I can do to make sure that we're using TIF dollars responsibly, that we're using grant dollars responsibly to help the next person, the next generation, or the current generation uh, keep their business, keep their business running, provide their services to the town, um, and, and do everything that they need to do and or things that they've had um, you know, family-wise for years and years and years. Lastly, it's, it's important to me uh, that we all remember that experience uh, and a proven successful track record in the areas that are important to us are extremely important as we go into the voting box. Um, regardless of who you vote for, I think that looking at the person, looking at what they can provide in the areas that pain you the most or the areas that we can uh, attack the most. Sorry. So, realistic solutions, thank you so much. <laughs> Moving on now to the candidates for county offices. For Fulton County Clerk, there's one Democrat candidate running, Jennifer J. Bankert. Good evening. Thank you to the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce and the Fulton County Farm Bureau for sponsoring this, the Meet the Candidates Night, and giving me the opportunity to address the citizens of Fulton County. My name is Jennifer Bankert. I am your candidate for the Fulton County Clerk and Recorder position. Upon hearing of my candidacy, people, many people, well, everyone asked me, why on earth are you running for office? Well, the answer is quite simple. I seek office because I have the desire to serve, to help the county take advantage of its opportunities and address the problems for the county. As the current Fulton County Clerk and Recorder, it has been my honor to serve you the last eight months after the retirement of Jim Nelson. During that transition, I was able to spend six weeks alongside of Mr. Nelson, gaining valuable knowledge and skills for this position. I learned very quickly that the clerk position was vital to the county operating operations at the county government. I bring 15 years of government experience working as the clerk and treasurer for the Dunferling St. David Water and Sewer Commission. I was elected to the position of the Dunferling Village Clerk serving four years, leaving due to a move to Canton. I also bring experience for my time as the Village of Norris Clerk and Water Clerk and Treasurer. I, alongside of a phenomenal staff, have done a lot of work in the last eight months. We have brought official records online to the citizens of Fulton County. We have implemented a program in which I enter the area high schools and speak to the 16 and 18 year olds about the election process and register them to vote if they wish. Being this the trial year for this, this program, I now have principals and teachers on, do, on, on plan, on guard, um, and excited about getting every senior in Fulton County registered to vote before they graduate their senior year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there are a number of projects we have to finish though. We have the properties fraud alert, digitalizing plat maps, the honor rewards veterans program, establishing a debit credit card payment in the clerk's office, purchasing new election equipment, and seeing the maps of the GIS system become useful tools to you, the citizens of Fulton County. I, along with other elected officials, have partnered with Senator Kaler to work on the options regarding the closure of the Duck Creek power plant, as Senator Kaler said earlier. He has passed his shell bill to the Senate or he's, he's, appro he's approached him with the shell bill to the Senate, the Senate Bill 3442, that will hopefully soften the financial burden to the county, help the individuals who lost their jobs to continue their careers, and bring jobs back to Fulton County. After two years of passing a $1.2 million deficit budget, and though there were unknown revenue opp opp opportunities within the budget, such as the cannabis tax, the increased motor fuel tax, the online sales tax, we can't afford some of the financial burdens that are being put on the county by the state of Illinois. I was able to cut 12% out of the budget this fiscal year. But with the hard work of the Finance Committee, the budget was passed in a last minute effort. The county board chairman was quoted saying, we need to pass the budget so I can go on to governing the county. Well, the citizens of Fulton County, you elect six elected officials and you elect 21 board members to work together to govern your county. 
There are a number of new issues that, that could worsen the financial burdens facing the county. There's a permanent vote by mail tax bill, which if passed and signed by the governor, will cost the county over $236,000 to be able to do. There have been discussions of abolishing townships and road commissions, which would be, have a huge impact on the county. There are bills discussing property tax reform. PTEL property tax would be very hard for the county. Although some of these bills are a little while off, the citizens need someone watching them and preparing for their impact if impl implemented. The county board believe that I possess the right blend of knowledge and skills to fulfill the responsibilities of the county clerk voting unanimously to appoint to the position. Now you, the citizens of Fulton County, have the opportunity to elect me as the Fulton County Clerk Recorder. Don't you let him. <laughs> I would appreciate your vote on March 17th. But finally, I would like to encourage each and every one of you to exercise your right to vote. Perhaps nowhere else is your voice more clearly heard or your participation so vital than in local government. Thank you and have a good evening. Also for Fulton County Clerk, there's one Republican candidate running, Patrick J. O'Brien. Good evening. First, I would like to thank the Canton Chamber of Commerce and Fulton County Farm Bureau for hosting this event. Secondly, thank you all for coming out and to all the candidates and elected officials for their service to their respective communities. For those that do not know me, my name is Patrick O'Brien and I am running for Fulton County Clerk. So I'll start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I'm 40 years old, born in Canton. I'm a resident of Farmington. I'm married to my wonderful wife, Maria, and we have five children together. Uh, Stephanie is a junior at Bradley University. Ray is a specialist in the United States Army. And Patrick Jr., Edward, and Samuel attend Farmington schools and are in the sixth, fifth, and third grades, respectively. From 2000 to 2019, I was employed by McDonald's, first as a shift manager and worked my way up to general manager where I was recognized twice as one of the top 10% of McDonald's restaurant general managers in the company. Following that, I was promoted to area supervisor where I was tasked with overseeing four restaurants, over 200 employees, and over 10 million in annual sales. I left in 2019 to give attention to my own business. In 2012, my wife and I started our own business, a restaurant in Farmington. A year and a half later, we expanded to another location uh, north of us in Elmwood. In 2016, we sold the Elmwood location and purchased and remodeled the Farmington American Legion building in downtown Farmington, where we are currently at with a restaurant, Parkside Deli and Diner, a property management company that includes some self-storage units and coming soon, a retail and business-to-business -business wireless outlet. I was previously elected to serve on the county board in 2012 to 2015, took a couple years off, and was re-elected to the board in 2018. During those stints on the board, I served as chairman of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee and as a member of the Executive Finance and Joint Advisory Health Insurance Committees. I'm currently the Fulton County Board Chairman. I've been in that role since I was elected by my peers in August of last year after the previous chairman's resignation. Upon being elected chairman, I decided to hold office hours from eight to four on Mondays to be more accessible to constituents, board members, community leaders, and other elected and appointed officials. Together, this board has worked hard during my short time as chairman. We have successfully negotiated three labor contracts, restructured committees, hired a new Clayburg nursing home administrator twice, a new county engineer, and moved the county board office into a central location outside of the courthouse, just to name a few. The best part about it is we did it with full transparency and in accordance with our committee system of government. 
As you can see, the constant in my professional career has been service. Whether it be customer service, food service, or public service, my passion is serving others. This is my main motivation for running for county clerk. The county clerk's office is a special office. As a county clerk, you are involved in major moments in people's lives, both bright and somber. The clerk's office is where people go when they're getting married to get their marriage license. It is where they go when they've had their first child to get the birth certificate. The clerk's office is involved when someone buys their first house and files their first mortgage. The clerk's office is in charge of elections, a very special duty in people's lives. Ultimately, the clerk is there in somber times as well when a loved one is lost and a death certificate is needed. I want to be there to share in the elation of life's special moments as well as be compassionate in that family's time of loss. In closing, I want to address the elephant in the room. No pun intended. Yes, I am running for the office of county clerk and will be the Republican nominee. This is my third election for office in Fulton County, and I'm well aware of what it takes to win an election. One of those necessities is support from all voters, regardless of party. So after we get through the primary on March 17th, let's not make this a Democrat versus Republican race. Let's make this a race of who you feel can do a better job. My elected public service experience, business experience, and passion for Fulton County is unmatched by my opponent. Can I have 20 seconds? The great thing about local government is that your representatives are your friends and neighbors. My neighbors will attest to my temperament, my character, my values, and my willingness and desire to help others. Again, thank you all for coming out, listening, and most importantly, thank you for being a part of our democratic process. For Fulton County Circuit Clerk, there's one Democrat candidate running, Charlene M. Markley. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start with thanking the Canton Chamber of Commerce and the Full Farm Bureau for her, um, giving me the opportunity to be here. My name is Charlene Markley, and I have been a resident of Fulton County most of my life. I am married, and I have three children. I started working in the circuit clerk's office in 1998 when I was hired as a part-time employee. In 1999, I was hired as full-time and placed in the criminal department. In 2009, I was promoted to the supervisor of the criminal department, and I held that position until I was appointed circuit clerk in July of 2019 when Mr. Yurkovich retired. Um, <laughs> I have been the backup to the bookkeeper in the circuit clerk's office who maintains the financials. I am the backup to the judge's administrative assistant. I have been a member of the drug court team and I have pretty much lived my life at the circuit clerk's office. <laughs> um, we've seen a lot of changes in our office in the last couple of years with mandatory e-file the traffic and criminal new assessment and we'll look forward to a lot more with criminal e-file as we know it's coming just when we don't know um, it's about all i have tonight and so i thank you all for letting me be here and i hope you have a great evening <laughs> For Fulton County Board from District 2, there are two Democrat candidates running. One of them is here tonight, Joseph Peterson. Can everybody hear me all right? Okay. 
I'm Joseph Peterson. I grew up in Cuba, Illinois. I graduated from Cuba High School in 2015. Then I graduated from Spoon River College in 2017. And this past May, I graduated from Bradley University with a bachelor's in political science. This is my second time running for county ward. I, did, I lost the set first time. But I learned experiences, and that's all that matters. I learned, and I love learning. That's the greatest thing that I love. I always love to learn new things. I always loved in class listening to the professors go on and on about a subject, even if it was kind of boring. <laughs> they did make it a little fun when they let us out a couple minutes early. Okay. For county board, our county ha has just suffered the loss of a power plant. But we have also, to our south, across the river, have lost another power plant. So we have had two power plants in the area close. That affects my district immensely well, because we will have people from both power plants affected by the loss of their job and by the loss of tax revenue. We must work with our state representatives and state senators to make sure that we can get some help for those people. They need it so that we can continue operating as a county. We already have budge a budget deficit as a county, and it has drained our cash reserves to ba barely any. But my big issue this time running is going to be redistricting. Every 10 years, they do the census. This time, the county will be redoing their districts after the current election. I am pr proposing that we redo districts so that there are seven districts in the whole county represented by three members each. So that it gives everybody in the county a better chance to know who their representative is. I am from Cuba, Illinois. Cuba. That is in the top uh, uppermost portion of my district. Astoria, which I've, be, I've been to a few times, is in the most southern part of my district. I don't travel very often down there, so people down there really don't know who I am. And I don't know some of the rep county board members from down there. I go to the county board meetings, but some members leave pretty quickly. But it's always fun to go to them anyway, because the after party is always the fun part. <laughs> I remember one time when I was running the first time that I stayed, the county board meeting ended at 7.30 and I was down there until midnight talking to a county board member. <laughs> so they can get a little fun, but that's all I have. I'll be quick and easy. So thank you all for coming. For Fulton County Board from District 2, there are three Republican candidates running. Two of them are here tonight. We'll hear first from Carl L. Williams. Hello. My name is Carl Williams. I am running for county board seat to represent the 2nd District. Also, I'm from Cuba. A um, little bit about myself. I was born and raised here in Fulton County, graduated from Cuba High School in 1984, which time I entered in the U.S. Army. After time in the service, I came back to Fulton County for a short period of time, but there was not much employment here in those times, so I moved to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and attended Middle Tennessee State University. While in Tennessee, I was hired by the Tennessee Department of Corrections. I served, worked at the Nashville Prison in Nashville, Tennessee. In 1980, September of 1989, I had the opportunity to come home to visit my family and realize that the Sheriff's Department was hiring deputies. I applied for the Sh Sheriff's Department's position and was subsequently hired, so I moved back to my hometown in Fayette and lived in my home house. From, in, excuse me, in 1998, my brother Glenn and I purchased a farm outside of Cuba, between Cuba and Smithfield, with our families. We moved, built new houses and moved out there. I've pretty much been a lifelong resident of Fulton County along with my whole family. In 1999, after moving out to our farm, I started a business called Muddy Creek Whitetail. It's an outfitting business for deer and turkey, um, and we still operate that business. In December of 2015, I retired from the Fulton County Sheriff's Department after 26 years. My 26 years there con condensed mostly at 16 years in an undercover drug unit with the state police and two years with the FBI Safe Street Task Force out of Champaign. 
During those years, I gained a lot of experience working undercover, doing some things that most people wouldn't realize. So, um, I also served during those 22, or 26 years as our union president, representing the sheriff's department and the members of the courthouse under Ask Me 31. In 1916, or excuse me, 2016, I started a business, Smoking Gun Barbecue. It's a catering business here in Fulton County. It's uh, been a very enjoyable business and kind of fun. Hoping after 30 years of attending many, many, many county board meetings, I've gained some experience, not only as being a county employee, a union president, but also a Fulton County small business owner. I believe my experience with that should benefit the county board and the members of Fulton County, along with all the citizens there. Thank you for this time. Uh, I will be around for any questions later on. And like I say, thank you for allowing us to speak this evening. For Fulton County Board from District 2, as we said, there are three Republican candidates running. The other one we're going to hear from tonight is Barry Beck. Thank you. I'm Barry Beck. I'm from Astoria, Illinois, and it's the southwest corner of Fulton County. And I'm glad to be here, and I have participated with working with the county over the years. Also, my local level of government has been with local politics there. I've been mayor for 12 years of Astoria and 14 years as trustee. And during the period of time of being mayor, with a board that was very and very instrumental in looking at the future. We built, we, uh, they built a sewer plant, lagoon type sewer plant, like $1 million. And also the water system was improved with the water source, treatment, and water towers. And that's like $1.5 million. And then after that, I got back into politics and ran for mayor in 2005. And I was very quiz inquisitive about why they chose me to run again because my politics had served and usually mayors drop into the background and no more a part of Astoria is what I've seen in the past. And with that, I uh, found out why real quick. Astoria needed to add another water tower because with the water system that they have, they've been able to improve it to the point that they sell water to Ipava, Table Grove, Southwest I mean, South Fulton Water District, and also to Hickory Curtain over at Schuyler County. And that has enabled them to grow in Astoria and keep it as a very prosperous community, not overabundant, but what going well. And with that, I want to comment that also Astoria, with the water system selling it, they've been able to service, I guess, a figure around 5,000 residents in Fulton County. And the system goes from Astoria clear up to Duncan, up to uh, Little America and just a little bit north of that. And that's a very good thing. That was one of the things of the past. And when I was there in Astoria, I worked for Stevens Publishing Company. And one of the things that I was managed there as manager being there, that one thing was to look at tomorrow, what we can do tomorrow to make the business better. And uh, Mr. Stevens, Ken Stevens, who was the owner of it, we worked together to build the operation up to a very profitable business and successful business, which has continued today. I left there in 92 and went and helped another printing business start and expand, and that was one in Havana, which is very successful too. And I decided that I was done with printing, so I would get involved with the fabrication. And there was a business in Riceville I went and started at, which was manufacturing and fabricating trailers, semi-trailers for recycling. One of them was type for oil filter recycling and the other one for grease. That was a very interesting uh, time because I got into fabrica fabrication and all with, with purchasing and also assembling the units. I have been a service to the community and I look to be a service to the county. I always have in Astoria looked at some way to make Astoria a better place to live. And that has always been my goal and I look at the county being on the county board, I'm going to look at it to what can I can help to make the county better. 
or is there something that I can add to the county board that would be an asset for them? The experience I received has been a gratitude to me and to the community, but I have served on a lot of different committees and boards, like for example, Central Illinois Agency on Aging, the 708 board, which is a mental health board of Fulton County. Uh, served as a VISTA, VISTA employee for the county in 2010, which went around and I went around and gathered data for the uh, county and converted the blueprints and drawings of their water and sewer system into a mapping program, which they have continued to build over the years. And I know at this present time, 911 is working with Astoria, who I represented at that time when I was uh, a VISTA employee also uh, for a mapping. And I don't know whether some of you know what the mapping is, but it's a, you take the blueprint of the town and then you take and put on a layer where it just shows where all the water lines are and a description of the water lines. And then another layer would be all of the sewer lines, the collection system, and the size of the lines and everything in the manholes. And then you go on and continue there with the gas and uh, electrical services. This is something that I really enjoyed when I was working with the county also with the mapping program and got into GIS, GPS, which really I think was a great thing. But it kind of went dormant there for a number of years with really being that active. And I was very fortunate a while back talking to the 911 people and also with the, as the person about he was wanting to do something in the county and needed a little bit of help. And the one thing I was looking at to help him was in a story was with their drawings. And in turn, he wanted to have a tower where the water tower was in Astoria, he wanted to put a, an antenna so there was better communication in the southern part of the county which I helped him do with the thing of it was that he was gonna help take that mapping situation, GIE, GPS, and develop it with the county. And I, I feel that I would be an asset to the county with all my experience and knowledge that I received over the years. And I thank you for the opportunity and thank the Farm Bureau and, uh, I'm getting so wound up there, I even forgot who else I was supposed to be thanking, but the <laughs> chamber, Canton Chamber, for Anil and uh, Fulton County. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. For judge of the Circuit Court, 9th Judicial District, to fill the vacancy of the Honorable Paul L. Mangieri, there's one Democrat candidate running. She's with us tonight, Emily S. Sutton. all girls. <laughs> My name is Emily Sutton. In 2019, the Illinois Supreme Court appointed me as an at-large circuit judge. Since then, I've been assigned to the Knox County Courthouse, and I am completing the term of retired judge Paul Mangieri. I never expected to be a candidate. I am not a politician. But in Illinois, circuit, clerk, uh, circuit court judges are elected, so here I am. I have embraced this opportunity, not because of ego or aspirations, but because it's a way I can be a public servant. As a judge, my number one priority is to be fair and ethical, to act with integrity at all times. I show that in the courtroom by treating people with respect, listening very carefully, diligently preparing, considering and reconsidering the evidence, and applying the law as it's written. Any personal preference or ideological leanings have no place in my courtroom. As I've visited with voters, a few people have asked me whether I'm a judge who will keep our community safe. Am I tough on crime? Well, my husband and I have five children between us, all of whom are in school and some of whom are old enough to be driving around out in the world on their own. I want my family to be safe in this world, just like I want your family to be safe. But the real question is whether I have the good judgment to be able to do that. I do. For the past seven months, I've demonstrated that in the decisions I make every day. I work hard to get it right for the parties to the case, for their families, for the victims, for the victims' families, and for the public at large. I've been talking about qualities that don't show up on a resume, things that are difficult to quantify. The State Bar Association has given voters a tool to help evaluate candidates. 
Before a judicial election, the Bar Association asks attorneys who know the candidates to give their opinion about a number of traits that make a good judge. I am proud that the results of that poll show that my peers know me to have the necessary characteristics. I was rated especially high in the areas of integrity and judicial temperament. Attorneys responding to the poll also answer the overall question of whether the candidate meets acceptable requirements for the office. A candidate is rated as either recommended or not recommended. I'm the only person in this race to be recommended. That I have the confidence of my peers hopefully tells you a lot about me. My professional experience also sets me apart. I've had my law license for 15 years. My first job out of law school was working with the appellate court. I was there for four years. There I handled cases such as assault and battery, drug and weapons crimes, termination of parental rights, divorces, and even high profile murders. I then moved into public practice, or private practice for the next 11 years. During that time I have, in no particular order, represented clients in business matters, divorce and parentage cases, estate planning, probate matters, small claims, landlord-tenant disputes, personal injury and property damages cases for both plaintiffs and defendants, grandparent visitation, child emancipation, orders of protection, unlawful tree cutting, twice, child abuse and neglect cases, adoption, breach of contract, appeals, arguing before the third and fourth district appellate courts. My experience as an attorney is broad and deep. I'm now sitting in a high volume traffic DUI and misdemeanor uh, courtroom. I also handle felony first appearances. I set and review bond for all defendants taken into custody. I hear evictions and foreclosures, and I'm, I, and I'm the presiding judge in uh, drug court. As a judge, I've also handled cases involving child custody and support cases, orders of protection, probate, tax, and small uh, claims cases. In our circuit, a judge will be assigned a variety of cases, not just criminal cases. She needs to be able to handle them all. I can and I do. In the Ninth Circuit, nearly 60% of all cases are considered quasi-criminal. Track of, traffic offenses, ordinance violations, conservation tickets. Almost 15% are various types of civil matters like small claims, landlord-tenant disputes, foreclosures. But just around 5% of cases in our circuit are felonies. While becoming a judge has been a learning curve for, would be a learning curve for anyone, it's not nearly as steep for me as it would be for someone without my long legal career and breadth of experience. I'm already doing this job that I am passionate about, and I'm getting good feedback from the professionals around me, yet I strive to improve every day. I pledge to continue to serve with integrity, and I thank you for your vote. For judge of the circuit court, 9th Judicial District, to fill the vacancy of the Honorable Paul L. Mangieri, there's one Republican candidate running, Andrew J. Doyle. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Andrew Doyle, and I'm a candidate for circuit judge of the 9th Judicial Circuit, which obviously includes Fulton County. A little history or background about myself. I'm married. My beautiful wife, Carissa, is here in the audience with me tonight. I uh, have two kids, Thomas and Conrad. I am uh, born and raised in Monmouth, Illinois. Um, when I graduated from high school in Monmouth, I attended the University of Illinois in Champaign. Upon graduating from college, I returned back to Monmouth and eventually bought a small business there, the Italian Village, a little local pizza and sandwich restaurant. I started working in that restaurant when I was 15 years old. It was always a dream of mine to come back to Monmouth and someday own that restaurant. And, uh, and I was able to realize that dream. After about a year or so, though, of owning a restaurant, I knew that there was something more. I needed to do more. So I uh, had a real estate license, and I opened a real estate office, uh, Doyle & Associates Realty, also there in Monmouth. Once I got both those businesses up on their feet, I, uh, again, thought to myself, you know, I'm doing pretty good here, but I, I want more. I need more. So I decided to go to law school. I applied to Northern Illinois University School of Law, and was accepted there. When I went to law school, I was thankful for having those two businesses, first of all, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to go to law school and provide for myself. When I went to law school, <clears throat> I continued to own and operate both those businesses. I took care of them in the evenings, 
every weekend I'd return home to handle the day-to-day -day affairs of those businesses, all while going to law school full-time. <clears throat> I would have to say that I managed um, two businesses in law school fairly well as I graduated law school with honors, graduating cum laude. When I returned to Monmouth, I was hired as an assistant state's attorney in Warren County. I could really cut my teeth um, as an assistant state's attorney as I learned criminal law. I was in the courtroom every single day as state's attorney, handling a wide variety of cases, everything from ordinances to traffic, misdemeanors, felonies, etc. When the state's attorney retired, I was appointed by the county board to become the state's attorney. In that next election the following year, I was elected state's attorney, and that's my current position today. Being a state's attorney um, has been a great experience. As I said, I handle a wide variety of cases, um, namely criminal cases, but also I deal with a lot of other items that come up with the county board, such as employment law, election law, taxation, et cetera. I also, during my time as state attorney, I have been the special prosecutor in over uh, 100 cases in both Knox County and Henderson County. In that capacity, I go handle cases in those other counties that they can't handle for whatever reason, whether they need help on the cases, whether they have conflicts in the cases, or they just need somebody else to come in and take care of them. There's been uh, a couple of honors that I've um, been proud to accept in the last uh, year. Namely, uh, the first honor would be I was elected by my peers, meaning all the other state's attorneys in Illinois, to serve as a representative on the Board of Governors for the Appellate Prosecutor's Office. Also last year, I was elected by my peers, the state's attorneys in Illinois, to serve on the Board of Directors for the Illinois State's Attorneys Association. In my time as state's attorney, there's been four key things that I've really honed in on that have been my priority as state's attorney. The first of those is cases involving children, uh, specifically abuse and neglect cases for juveniles. The second one is crimes involving firearms. The third would be assault on police officers and other first responders. And fourth, crimes involving the delivery of methamphetamine. As you're well aware here in Fulton County, and as we are in Warren County and throughout the night judicial circuit, that methamphetamine has been a scourge to our communities. It's upended our communities and really caused a lot of the other crimes that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. And as state's attorney, it's been my priority to combat that scourge of methamphetamine. Now, some of the, the experience that I've been talking about, it, it, it's a wide variety, as I said, mainly dealing with criminal offenses. But why does that matter? Because in our circuit, almost 80% of the cases that a judge sees are criminal cases. In order to have the, those cases and be able to judge them fairly, you have to have that experience. During my tenure as state's attorney, I've handled over 1,000 felony cases, thousands of misdemeanors and DUIs, hundreds of juvenile abuse and neglect cases. I've done jury trials, I've done bench trials, and I've been successful in the prosecution of those cases. But over and above that, I have the experience from my past as a business owner and a state's attorney to be able to talk with the public, to know the people that deserve a second chance and deserve a break, and to understand and recognize the people who need to be put behind bars and never see the light of day again. I do have the experience to be a judge. It's a natural transition from state's attorney to the judge role, and I look forward to serving this community as a judge in the future. Thank you. That wraps things up for Meet the Candidates. We thank each of the 14 candidates for participating. We also thank the in-person radio, newspaper, television, Facebook Live, and YouTube audiences and readers for being a part of it. And the organizers, the Fulton County Farm Bureau Legislative Committee, along with the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee. Sponsorship and funding support has been provided by Monocle's Pizza of Canton and American Pest Control of Hannah City. 
You're reminded there are campaign materials in the back of the room on the table to pick up and take with you. Refreshments are being served back there as well. And many of the candidates are sticking around to meet with those of you here at the Donaldson Center. As a reminder, stories about tonight's event will appear in the coming days in the Fulton Democrat and the Canton Daily Ledger. A video recording will be shown on a repeat basis on Channel 22 of the Canton, Cuba, and Lewistown cable TV systems. It will play Monday, March 9th, and again on Monday, March 16th, starting sometime during the morning each day. A recorded audio vision version will air on WBYS AM 1560 and FM 93.7 mid to late afternoon on Monday, March 16th. The exact time will be announced on WBYS later. And it will be on YouTube starting no later than Monday, March 9th. Search Canton, Illinois, Meet the Candidates on YouTube, and you'll find it. And also, do the newspapers need the candidates for pictures in the back afterwards, or did you get everything you need? Okay. Those are the candidates. Those of you who are still here, please meet in the back, and the newspaper folks will uh, get pictures taken uh, uh, you as a group as they would like to. But here's the most important message of all. Please go to the polls and exercise your right to vote on Tuesday, March 17th. You heard many of the candidates talk about that, and that's the very important part. So thanks, everybody, for coming, and please drive carefully on your way home. Helping bring you this event, Spoonover Animal Clinic, located on North Main Street in Canton. Stereo Village Sound Specialist located on South 4th Avenue in Canton. AM 1560 WBYS, the voice of Fulton County. By Fulton County Housing Authority, Maple Manor, and Longview High Rises. By the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce. To learn more about becoming a member, call 647 2677. AC Wood Creations, located in Canton, Illinois. Napa Automotive Parts of Canton, North First Avenue in Canton. By Lands of God Daycare and Preschool. By Wesley United Methodist Church, located at 120 North Avenue A in Canton. By CD Country 107.9, your home in the country. And by M. Bixler Video Productions in Canton, Illinois.